We know all triangles have three sides and three angles. When we're asked to solve a triangle, it means we need to get the measures of all missing sides and angles. If possible, we want to use the original information given, because if we make a mistake, let's say calculating this angle, everything that follows will be incorrect. We can't always do that, but we're going to try as much as we can. There's two strategies you have for finding missing sides and angles in a right angle triangle. You can either use Pythagoras' theorem, which you've practiced in previous years, or you can now use your primary trigonometric ratios as well. Take a look at the first example, and we have a diagram always need two pieces of information in order to solve for remaining either angles or sides. In the first diagram, we know that this angle is 40 degrees. We also know that the height of the triangle is 15 centimeters. So we know two of the angles. We need to know two pieces of information as well as this 90 degrees. So we know these two angles. Could we find the third one? Well, we also know the sum of the interior angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. So if I take my 180, subtract those two, I can find my missing angle, F. And remember, we use a capital letter to represent that, and F is going to be 50 degrees. I now have two side lengths that I have to find. I can't use Pythagoras' theorem, because in order to use that theorem, I need to know two of the sides. I only know this one side. We have to go to the primary trigonometric ratios. Using the original information, information given because this is the original angle and, and yes if po if you have to you can go with this one but try to go with this one so from this angle I know that this is my opposite and this is my adjacent so the opposite and adjacent and if you want to maybe just go over here um, we can always write on the side here some old horses can always help the other animals. That's going to be my tangent ratio. So we're going to set it up similar to what we did yesterday. The tangent of that angle is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. When you put that in your calculator, you get that 12.6. And you're going to notice yesterday I was writing down all the time divided by one and then showing what I'm doing. That's to help you get set up in the beginning, but we don't need to do that as we move forward. The second side that we need to find is the hypotenuse of the triangle. And again, going from the original information, if this is my reference angle, I know the adjacent side, I'm looking for the hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuse is the cosine ratio. So we set up the cosine of 40 is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And again, you're going to go 15 times 1 is 15, and then we're going to divide by that cosine of 40. Please put this in your calculator to make sure that as we go through these, you are in fact getting the correct values. The second example does not have a diagram, but we do see that we have to solve. So because it says solve, I'm looking for my missing angles and my missing side lengths. I'm going to start by putting in the information that we know. So we know that angle E is 90 degrees, so I'm going to set up that's my right angle there. That also tells me that the side opposite from it is lowercase e. And we have two more sides here, D and F, that we're given. And it doesn't matter where they go. One is D and one is F. Based on how I've drawn this, and again, this is not drawn to scale, it appears as though uh, this is my longer side, although it's really not drawn to scale. Okay, so if I put side F there, that means this has to be angle F. And then by default, my remaining side is that 15.2 meters. And that means that opposite from it is angle D. Now, again, your picture does not need to look exactly like this, but you do have to make sure that uh, side length D is opposite angle D. Side length F is opposite angle F. All right, in a case like this, this is our only side that we have yet to solve for. So I'm going to start there. Because I know two of the sides and no angle at at this point other than the right angle, I'm going to use Pythagoras' theorem. So we know we can solve for E. Um, because that's the hypotenuse, I'm going to take the square root of the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So we're going to put that into our calculator. And again, if you need to write out the uh, one side squared plus the other side squared equals this side squared. You can do that. So this is the a squared plus b squared. And because I'm looking for c, so to speak, that square root I'm going to get, or that squared I'm going to get rid of by square rooting. So this is just a shortcut for using Pythagoras' theorem. 
And when we put that in, we know E is going to give us a measure of 22.6 meters. And then use what we know about triangles. This needs to be the longest side. So just quickly check if this number is not longer than those two. That indicates that you have a problem. All right, once I know that, I've got two more angles that we need to find in order to solve that triangle. It doesn't matter what you start with. So I don't know. I guess I'll start at the with F, the one at the top. If I start with angle F, I know that I'm given the opposite side and the adjacent side. That is going to be my tangent ratio. So I'm going to set up the tangent of angle F is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And again, when you put this into your calculator, it's going to be that second function tangent and then 16.7 divided by 15.2. Please make sure that you try this. And when we do that, we know that angle F is going to come out to be that 48 degrees. All right, and now you have a choice. You could use a tangent ratio again to solve for D. This is now the opposite, this is now the adjacent. So that's one option. So actually let's maybe set this up. So if we're gonna go the tangent of D, I'm now gonna do the opposite side to angle D divided by the adjacent side to angle D. And when we do that, we will end up with, rounded to the nearest whole, 48 degrees. The other thing you could do is because we know the sum of the interior angles is 180, we could also go 180 minus that 90 degrees minus that 48 to get the 42 as well. So that's another option you have. We're going to take a look at how to set up a variety of word problems here. And there's two terms that come up frequently that you need to familiarize yourself with. One is the angle of elevation and one is the angle of depression. It's always from the horizontal. So one hint is kind of think about where is your line of sight. And from that line, we know this is our horizontal. Elevation, think about elevate, we are going up. So this was our original, um, just think kind of the arm of the angle. And from there, we are rotating this up, that is our angle. And that, by the way, is theta. It's a Greek letter that we often use to represent a missing angle. Angle of depression, likewise, we always begin from the horizontal, and somebody who's depressed is often down. So think we're going down. So we started here, we're moving the second arm down, and that angle becomes our angle of depression. The first thing you always wanna do as much as possible is to draw the picture. In our first example here, we have a surveyor, and the surveyor is standing here looking from his transit. You can look up what a transit is. It's that little thing that they look out of. And his transit, we know, is 65 meters from the grain silo. So this is that grain silo, those large silver buildings you see on the prairie sometimes that holds the wheat or the grain. So again, assume that any building is going straight up at a 90 degree angle. So I put my 90 degrees there. And we also know that the transit, um, it's 65 meters from the silo, but it also records an angle of elevation of 52 degrees. So when I'm looking out here, this is my horizontal, I'm gonna put that in first. I am looking up at 52 degrees to the top of the silo, so that should actually go to the top there. That angle of elevation, we're going up, is 52 degrees. We know that the height of the transit is 1.7 meters. So it's not on the ground. It's 1.7 meters up, which is why my horizontal is 1.7 meters off the ground. And we are ultimately looking for the height of the silo. This is the silo. So I've labeled H. Now the trick here is our right angle triangle only goes like this. But however, if I can find the height of that triangle, I can add on that 1.7 meters height of the transit giving me the height of the grain silo. I'm gonna take a look at the angle I'm given, and I'm gonna say, okay, I'm looking for the opposite side. I know the adjacent side, that's my tangent ratio. So I'm going to set that up and solve for X, and that's only giving us the height of the triangle. We need the height of the silo, so then I'm gonna add on that 1.7 meters to get that, and check how we're rounding. Um, it says to round to the nearest meter. Now one important point is you do not want to round until the end, especially with trigonometry. It often is going to be, if you round too soon, enough to change your final answer. So that's why here I indicate that this number keeps going and I'm going to keep that value in the calculator until the very end, then we round off. In our second example, we have two runners 
represented by A and B, and they're heading towards the finish line. We have an apartment window 80 meters off the ground and 20 meters behind the finish line. So when I drew this, this is my apartment building here, and I'm looking from a point 80 meters off the ground, and then I just used red to show my finish line. So this is kind of the finish line I just marked on there on the ground, and we have two runners who are heading toward the finish line. So I put one of those runners here and one of those runners here. So they're coming this way towards the finish line. We're also told that the observer, who's standing here, measures the angle of depression to the runners to be 28 degrees and 24 degrees. Respectively just means that the first one runner here goes with the first measure, the second runner here goes with the second measure. So I know if this is my uh, point of observation, here's my horizontal, I know I'm looking down. I'm going to draw in here, so I've got one angle of depression is to that triangle, and one angle of depression is to that one. The smaller one is the smaller measure, so I know that this is going to be 24 degrees, and then this here is going to be 28 degrees. Because it tells me that 28 degrees is the line of uh, angle of depression to runner A, if I follow this, so my 28 degrees here, that tells me that this is person A, so I can fill that person in. And then I also know that the 24 degrees is person B. So if I follow this measure of 24, that means right there is where person B is. And ultimately what I'm trying to find is the distance between the runners. So I'm looking for, uh, let me choose a different color here. So I'm looking for what is that distance between the runners. Now we do have a triangle right here, but that's not a right angle triangle. So at this point we don't know how to solve triangles unless they are right angle triangles. But we do have a right angle triangle here and if I'm looking from the horizontal, that also tells me that this is a right angle. So I can draw that in. This here is 90 degrees. If we know this is 90 degrees and this is 24 degrees, then I can also get the measure from here to here by going 90 minus 24, which is that 66 degrees and then I'm gonna choose another color, we can do the same thing here. So knowing that this is a right angle, if from here to here is 28, we can go 90 minus 28, and that tells us that from here to here, and I'm bringing this kinda of really far down just so we can get the point, is going to be 62 degrees. Normally, we'd move the angles closer to here, but that's okay. All right. So now look at what we know. We need two pieces of information besides that right angle. If we're taking a look at this triangle, we have two pieces of information. I'm going to just redraw this on the side. My picture was getting a little bit cluttered. So I'm taking a look at this triangle here that I highlighted in yellow, and I drew the same one over here just so we could see what was happening. The height of that triangle is that 80. Now, you have to be careful. 20 meters is only from here to the finish line. The base of our triangle, we don't know. So I just put a variable in there to represent that this is an unknown amount. And this angle on that small triangle from here to here, that is that 62 degrees. Alternatively, this is not the only way that you can do this. If we know that this is 62, if this is 62, likewise, this has to be 28. So you could also put the 28 there and then use that as your reference angle as well. There's more than one way, certainly, to set these problems up. That's why it's just really important that you show your work. If I choose to go with this 62, this is my opposite side, this is my adjacent side, hence I'm going to use the tangent ratio. So I did that, and remember, we're not done yet. This only gives us the measure from here to here, and so I'm going to keep that number in my calculator with these dots. And then similar to that, I'm going to take another color here, and let's try this one. Okay, so now if we look at the second triangle, so this here, I'm going to use blue, is my next triangle. So I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to just kind of draw this really quite roughly over here. And when I do that, I still have that 80 meter height. 
this is still a right angle. And then on that blue triangle, this is a 66 degree measure. And again, the base of the triangle, I don't know what that base is. So I'm gonna choose another variable. And from here to here, I don't know, let's just call that Y. So this is now gonna be Y. Again, we're gonna use the tangent ratio because from that 66 degree angle, we have an opposite side Y and we're dividing that by our adjacent side. So when you put this in your calculator, we're gonna go tangent of 66, close the bracket. We're gonna multiply that by 80, and that means that Y gives us 179.682. And again, we're not done yet. The original question wants us to calculate the distance between runners. So if we know the distance from here to here, and we know the distance from here to here, by subtracting those two, I can get the distance between those runners. So I'm going to take that last number in my calculator, that 179.68, I'm gonna subtract from it that 150.458, and when we do, we get 29.224. Check what we're rounding to. This one says to the nearest meter. So they are 29 meters apart. This last one here, I'm not gonna go through in great detail. Even in class, we don't go through it in great detail. The important piece is trigonometry problems show up multiple places in the real world. And you always want to set up a diagram to help you visualize what's happening. Which angles and side lengths do we know? What do we still have to find out? So if you want to take a look at this, uh, see if you can kind of follow along or even try to do it yourself and then compare it with what I have. Keep in mind there's a few different ways you can go about setting these up and you will still get to the same answer.